Hey there, I'm Dr. Mark Heisig. I'm a concussion specialist, and today we're going to answer the question, can you fly after a concussion? Uh, so what I'm going to be talking about comes from a 2020 study where they looked at NCAA athletes and military cadets. Um, and these military cadets were also involved in the NCAA or they were uh, involved in intramural sports. So it was largely an athletic population. Uh, so it doesn't make it generalizable to everyone, uh, but it's what we have. So uh, what this study found was that for the most part, you're okay to fly after a concussion. Some of the limitations were that these flights weren't necessarily longer than three hours. Um, a, not many of these athletes or these military folks had to cross more than three time zones. Um, so for the most part, the flights were short. They weren't really long duration, so we don't know how that impacts it. Um, but the, all these athletes got on within 12 hours of their injury for the most part. There was no significant impact on their symptom severity, particularly headache severity, uh, no impact on symptom recovery, no impact on their return to learn, their return to play start time. Um, and there was really, it didn't matter whether uh, you flew or whether you didn't fly. So they divided these, these people up into groups that flew and did not fly. Um, and the people that flew and the people that did not fly, uh, it didn't matter. Uh, they seemed to recover on the same trajectories. They seemed to have no impact on symptom severity, yada yada. So what is the concern with flying in general? Really it comes down to the cabin pressure. So when you're in a plane, they gotta pressurize the cabin so that when you go up to like 30,000 feet in the air, uh, you're not suffocating, you're not starved for oxygen. So they pressurize the cabin to that of uh, a pressure that's similar to if you were in 5,000 to 8,000 feet elevation. So somewhere between kind of like Denver to Mexico City, uh, somewhere in that elevation range. And so uh, if you've ever been to elevation, you know, it can be a little bit harder to breathe because there's a lower partial pressure of oxygen. So there's a lower pressure of the atmosphere pushing, literally pushing oxygen into your blood in your lungs. Uh, so when you pressurize at kind of a lower than sea level pressure, the idea is, well, maybe there's a, a hypoxic, a low oxygen condition that's causing uh, sort of an inflammatory response and maybe making the the mild TBI or the concussion recovery worse. And so the researchers were like, well, if this is if this is happening at this cabin pressure, maybe it's gonna make these athletes worse, let's look. So they looked at almost 4,000, a little over 3,000 people, and they found, well, actually it didn't. And so how they explained that was that uh, it's possibly that these athletes were just fit and they were able to accommodate to the, the hypoxic conditions. Uh, the other perspective was that, honestly, most commercial air flights don't decrease oxygen to an appreciable level, uh, meaning that if you're on a commercial air flight, you're probably not going to lose oxygen to the point that you actually have uh, sort of acute elevation or mountain sickness. You're not going to have an adverse health outcome. Uh, you're not going to have some sort of clinical response to flying for the most part. Um, the other thing that they found is that there was a study um, that was referenced in this study that I'm talking about where they simulated a condition of about 3,800 meters, so like 12,000 feet. Um, so this is like in the mountains of Peru uh, that you would have to be. And what they found is there were cognitive deficits. They did find memory uh, deficits in these conditions, but when you remove that condition, the memory returned really quickly. So what they found was, well, maybe these hypoxic conditions do create a problem, but it's really transient. Um, so bringing that back to the airplane though, 12,000 feet elevation is very different than 5,000 to 8,000 feet elevation. Uh, most people don't have any symptoms until 10,000 feet elevation or above. Uh, so kind of scattered and rambled, but for the most part, you're safe to fly after concussion. Any of the problems that we might see um, probably won't happen on a commercial flight. They'd probably have to happen at lower pressures or higher altitudes. Um, and if anything does happen, it's likely transient. And when we look at how it's impacting symptom severity and symptom recovery and return to play and learn in school and all that, um, it doesn't seem to have an effect. So you're likely safe to fly on a, a shorter flight, three hours or less, um, in the acute phases of your concussion. We don't have the data on the longer term stuff where uh, you're on maybe an international flight or you have to cross multiple time zones. Um, but likely for kind of domestic travel, you're probably okay to fly. Uh, if you have any more questions about concussion PCS, go ahead and leave them in the comments. If you learned something, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and give my account a follow for more concussion PCS content. Thank you.